Hey guys, so in today's video I figured I've done a lot of videos on how to do configurations of already built systems, but I'm sure that there's some younger guys out there that really want to build either a gaming machine or something nostalgic just to learn how to use the older systems. So in today's video I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to install Windows XP on your hardware. Now to start with, you're going to need a piece of hardware that will support Windows XP. And you can either use an older desktop that you find somewhere. Um, since XP was technically supported, at least in the mainstream version, until about 2018, you could really use anything that's a sixth generation Intel-based processor or prior to natively run Windows XP on the hardware. After the seventh gen, they start to add additional things to the actual hardware, which may make it more difficult from a driver's perspective to install Windows XP, but it's still possible. But for the sake of ease of installation, make sure that you're running at least a sixth generation or older processor. And by older, you could go all the way back to, I think the Pentium 1 series will still run Windows XP. Okay, so what do you need uh, outside of that? You'll need an ISO file that has the XP operating system on it. Now, if you have the ISO file, you can either burn a CD um, and then install from a CD, or if you have hardware that supports the ability to boot off of a USB drive, you could use that as well. Uh, I would suggest using an application called Rufus to do so. I'll put that in the description as to how to download that, and I will also put in the description how to use it. Um, that said, let's get started okay guys. so let's start with the partition so what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the full disk on this so i'm not going to go super in depth into uh creating partitions however if you do need to create a partition it's really simple in xp you just hit the letter c on your keyboard and that will get you into the partition configuration template so if we just hit c there we go. So we could go in here in the nearest of 20 gigs. We could actually change this to whatever we want to make it. And then once we do, we would just create, create the partition by hitting enter. If you decide you don't want to change it, you want to leave it what it was, you could just hit escape to go back to the previous screen. Keep in mind, this is in megabytes. So if you want to do half of whatever it is, you're going to have to put it in megabytes. Um, okay, so the other thing I want to add to this is... Um, if you create something, so for instance, if we hit C and we create a partition for the full 20 gigs or as close to 20 gigs as we have configured here, um, that's what we'll get. But if you decide that you don't want to create the partition, you want the system to do it automated, um, we could do that too. So what we would do is we would just hit D as in dog. And then it's going to ask us, you know, for an option here, whether or not we want to escape to go back from not deleting or hit the L key to delete the partition, which brings us back. But for the sake of this, uh, we're just gonna use the whole thing. So we're just gonna click enter to continue. Okay, so now we're in the partition table area here. And I think the question probably is gonna be, what's the difference between quick and slow? And the short answer to this is, if you're running a disk that has been used multiple times and has been formatted multiple times, use the slow version. And if you're running a disk that has been just taken out of the box that you're going to use specifically for this or it's virtual on a virtual system then choose quick uh and also choose ntfs at this point you could run fat but there's really not it's not necessary to run fat to run old games or uh anything that you're uh really trying to do with windows xp at this point ntfs will work fine especially with modern hardware so um, i would suggest just choosing ntfs also fat has a limitation on storage size and things like that it just just choose NTFS, trust me. So uh, for the sake of this, we're just gonna click on quick and then uh, continue on. Okay, so now the system's gonna copy over all the files uh, required for us to do the installation. Um, it's then also going to eventually get to the point where it's gonna prompt us to do a reboot. This may take a few minutes, but it's not gonna take anywhere near what it would have taken on a P1 machine. So just be patient. Okay, so once the system finishes copying all the files over, it'll just prompt you to reboot, and then it'll auto-reboot itself after it has completed the process. So now the system's restarting. So there we go. Now we get the exciting new look of Windows XP. You can see on the left it's going to say that it's going to take approximately 39 minutes. 
keep in mind that this does not automatically adjust itself to the fact that it's running on a 10th gen uh, multi-core processor. It's written to give an estimate of time if it was installed on a Pentium 3. Then obviously now it's going to tell us about trying the easiest XP or easiest Windows yet. And quite frankly, I'm going to agree that this is probably one of the best operating systems they ever made. So, yep. Yeah, it's obviously going to give us information about staying up to date and how to run Windows updates. Again, check out one of my other videos if you guys are interested in learning how to run all the updates on XP easily to get yourself up to the latest patch revisions of XP. Okay guys, so now we get to a point where we actually have some interaction with the operating system for the first time. And what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to choose our settings. Um, generally speaking, this is going to be regional language options. If you're able to speak English, then there's really no reason to click this customize button. If you can't speak English, uh, hopefully Google's doing a good way of translating me because if not, you know, there's that. Um, and then you can go under here, which is where the text input is. So um, right now the system is just designed for, you know, United States English. However, we could change this and choose different languages for different keyboard options. Um, no reason to do that on this particular machine. So we're just going to click on next. Then it's going to prompt us here to enter our name and the organization. This is not your username. This is just your name, like as in the owner of this computer. So we could name it anything you wanted to. Um, so I'm just going to say YouTube and then YouTube and then just click on next. And this is where you're going to enter your product key. I'm not going to provide the product key in this video. Um, if you guys could find one or have one handy, just put it in. If not, then you're going to have to look for one or purchase one. I'm not going to get involved in that part. This particular operating system, I own the key for this. So uh, just enter your key in and then click on next. Okay, guys, so once you have your key entered, uh, you'll get to this screen and you're going to enter in your computer name. Um, you're going to enter in a password uh, and then you're going to click on next. So just make sure your password matches and it's something that you could remember to get into your system. So click next. And then we're going to get a location here. We're going to have to choose our location. So we're going to choose Eastern Standard Time um, just for daylight savings time. We'll see the date, which is Friday, March 15th, 2024 and the time. And we're going to click on next. And then the system is going to write the information that we just set. You notice how it says it's going to take 31 minutes, but you know clearly that is not the case. So it's going to ask us for our uh, internet settings. So we're just going to click typical. We're going to make this machine a part of the work group. And then we're going to click on next. And then the system is going to write these files, these changes that we just put. Keep in mind, we've got 27, 26, and this more or less counts like seconds versus minutes because this is a much faster machine than what Windows XP was originally shipped with. So then the machine is just going to finalize the installation. So you'll see it's saving all the system settings like it shows here. Once again, you know, it's going to count down a lot faster. So, I mean, in reality, if you're on at least uh, probably an 8th gen Intel based processor, an i5 and i7 or newer, and you're running this virtualized with like, say, 4 gigs of memory allocated to the actual virtual image, um, 19 minutes on Windows XP on that particular system would probably be more like 3 minutes, maybe 4. There you go. So now the system likely is just going to reboot itself. We'll see if there's any errors. Nope, there it goes. So now we're starting Windows XP again. And then we'll get a prompt to ask us if we could read the visual elements on the screen to adjust the screen resolution. And yes, we can. And OK. And there you go, the original Windows XP splash screen telling you about how Windows XP is starting. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions. Now we're going to click on next. We're going to click on not right now. So we're going to click on next. And then it'll ask us specifically about the internet connection, whether or not we're going to go through a local area connection or home network, or this is going to be directly connected to the internet. Now keep in mind, if you do directly connected to the internet, generally that means that the system has like dial up. So we're going to just click on next. Um, are you ready to register online with Microsoft? No, because 
There's no registration anymore for Windows XP, so I click on Next. And I'm going to ask us for my name. I'm going to put in T-O-R. I'm going to click on Next. And that's going to tell me that I finished the installation and successfully configured. I'm going to click on Finish, and the system's going to restart itself and go into the Windows login. And there we go. We're logged into Windows XP. And this is how you configure Windows XP from the ISO file all the way to the point where you get to the operating system. Like and subscribe for more videos. Check out the links in the description. There's ones on how to do the updates. There's ones on how to do the configuration. There's ones on how to set this thing up to be a gaming machine. There's ones on installing all the drivers. All of that information is provided in the description. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.